Welcome to Telesur. I'm Carla Gonzalez, and this is from the South. In Brazil, the governor of the state of Rio de Janeiro has tested positive for COVID-19. Wilson Witzel said he didn't feel well since Friday and asked to be tested. Witzel said he has mild symptoms and will continue to work from self-isolation. I had a fever, sore throat, loss of smell, and thank God I'm feeling well and will continue to work here at the Laranjeiras Palace in keeping with the restrictions and medical recommendations. You can be sure I will get through this. Also in Brazil, a new study estimates that the real coronavirus infection rates are much higher than official numbers. Brian Mir has those details in this report. There's been a lot of reporting in the media recently about how the real infection numbers of coronavirus in Brazil are higher than the official numbers. And this is because Brazil is one of the countries that's doing the lowest amount of testing. In fact, National Health Minister Luis Mandetta has even admitted publicly that real numbers are higher than what the official numbers are because of these testing bottlenecks. They've ordered tests from China that haven't arrived yet. They're having problems administering the test. They're having problems processing the test. So for now, only about 240 Brazilian citizens per 100,000 residents have been tested. And this compares with like numbers in the thousands in places like Germany, even the United States. So this morning, the first really systematic scientific study was released, generating an estimate of what the real numbers might look like. Now, this was produced by NOIS, which is a national center for public health intelligence gathering information. They work with daily updated hospital records from across the country. And in this case, they use the hospital records from pneumonia patients and people with acute respiratory infections to generate estimates of what the real numbers might look like. And what they've come up with is they estimate that only 8% of the people with coronavirus have tested positive, have been tested. They think the real numbers are 12 times higher than what's being officially reported. And one of the reasons they give for this is they say there's a large number of asymptomatic patients and patients with light symptoms that are not going to the doctors. That was Brian Mir from Brazil. Social organizations have rejected the latest economic measures announced by the government of Ecuador to tackle the virus. Our correspondent, Denise Herrera in Quito, has more. After the economic announcements made by the government, several social organizations of workers have rejected these new economic measures. According to the government, they are seeking to protect all the citizens' rights. But the workers are saying that the government is responding to the IMF interest. According to the finance minister of Ecuador, Richard Martinez, they are seeking to preserve all the Ecuadorian jobs. So the government is recommending that the workers and the bosses have to meet agreements related with the salaries and the working hours. In this context, the social organizations of workers, they are rejecting these new measures because they say that the workers are again responding to the economic crisis. Also, the government said that they are taking all the preventive measures to stop with the spread of this new coronavirus. Meanwhile, the health sector in Ecuador are still denouncing that they need all the medical equipment to face in the first, in the first line this sanitary crisis. Ecuador has now, according to the authorities, around 7,500 cases of the new coronavirus and 369 people have that have died because of this new coronavirus. This new economic um, worker reform have to be discussed by the National Assembly, but until now, the Assembly members of Ecuador didn't receive any project. That was Anise Herrera from Quito. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, Ecuadorian authorities have received more than 6,800 complaints of gender violence within the last month. According to the country's Human Rights Protection Council, there are 235 alerts every day of women who suffer some kind of violence. During the health emergency, there have been six attempts of femicide, and three of them were killed. In Ecuador, 65 out of 100 women have been victims of gender violence. In Bolivia, campesino unions of the Chapare region continue to send solidarity to communities amid the quarantine and suspension of economic activities. 
Local produce has been collected from the town of Chimore and is delivered to the municipality of Vinto and to the mayor, Patricia Arce. In recent weeks, Bolivia saw food riots in response to the lack of economic support for people who can't work since the restrictions began in late March. While the de facto government has announced small investments that will not apply to most citizens. Well, I would like to give thanks for this gesture of solidarity. The Tropico has always been known to show solidarity with everyone, and this is no exception. Thank you. This is not the first time that they bring us fruit, and for us, this is an extremely important help because there are people who do not have much right now, and they are living through a very difficult time. I think. All of us are experiencing a difficult time, so I think we need to come together to be able to reach those who need help. Almost 800 Bolivians will undergo a quarantine in the Chilean city of Iquique after Bolivia's de facto government has finally agreed to allow its own citizens to return to the country amid the pandemic. The group was stranded along the border for over a week waiting to cross. The president does not give a reason nor an answer so far or anything. We don't know why she doesn't want to let us through, because the truth is that she is afraid that we are infected. Social organizations are rejecting the way the Chilean government is counting the deaths due to the coronavirus. The government of Sebastián Piñera announced it considers people that have died due to COVID-19 as recovered patients. The Minister of Health said that those who died have stopped being a source of contamination and have now been added to the list of recovered. He said 898 patients who have either entered a quarantine or died will be declared recovered. This comes after scientists in Thailand identified the first instance of somebody dying from COVID-19 after catching it from a dead body. Dominica has received 3,000 rapid testing kits and 50 reagents from Venezuela as the South American country continues to assist its neighbors in the fight against COVID-19. At the delivery event, Dominica's Minister of Health called for an end to unilateral coercive measures against Venezuela. I would like to call on the international community. Let us seek and find a peaceful resolution to the problems now being faced in Venezuela. We do not believe that civil war will solve the problem. In fact, that has proven to create more problems in other parts of the world. And so I would like to join our other CARICOM brothers and sisters in calling for a peaceful solution, a peaceful resolution to the problems now being undergone in Venezuela. This situation, as you know, has inevitably caused a decrease in the level of cooperation and solidarity that our beloved Republic of Venezuela was used to sharing. But have no doubt, it is our goal to free ourselves from these sanctions and blockades to redeploy our resources for the benefit of our Latin American and Caribbean region. We have more stories coming up. Don't go away. Thank you for joining us again. The Prime Minister of the Bahamas, Hubert Minnis, provided the latest figures regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in his country. The Ministry of Health reported two additional confirmed cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number of confirmed cases in the Bahamas to 49 as of Monday, the 13th of April, 2020. Eight of the COVID-19 positive patients have died. The patients who have succumbed to COVID-19 were older in age and had significant comorbidities or conditions that are known to cause a poor outcome in COVID-19. 
Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown has raised doubt that the international community would assist the Caribbean region amid the COVID-19 pandemic. So now that the entire world is in crisis and that they have their own problems, that they're thinking inwardly. In fact, they're so domesticated in their thinking that even a few ventilators, a lot of you, a few ventilators to come to the Caribbean, they're seizing them. The law of you mask to come to the Caribbean, they're seizing them. What does that tell you? There will not be any significant um, response to help us. And you know what they'll say to us? You're relatively wealthy countries. You have very large GDP, so fix your own problems. And if you can't fix it, we'll go into a formal climate program. And that is where we will have some level of concern in the sense that we do not believe that IMF mean, programs in which they're going to tell us to send home 50% of the people, that that is the solution. We had this challenge about six years ago, as soon as we came in, within a matter of weeks. We had this uh, situation with the IMF in which they requested that we go back into another IMF program. We said to them, no. The Cuban government announced on Tuesday that 132 COVID-19 patients have recovered, while the death toll stands at 21. 599 people out of the 766 patients who have been diagnosed since we started studying this disease are in a stable condition. We have reports of 21 deaths in total so far, which puts the mortality rate to a 2.7 percent rate. Meanwhile, 132 patients have been discharged from hospitals. Yesterday we had 11 patients who recovered, nine are under close monitoring and three in critical condition. Also in Cuba, working from home has been one of the measures promoted by the government in response to the pandemic. Let's have a look at how this is being implemented in the island. From her home in a locked down Havana, Lisa Villa is changing her creation methods. She is the head of Palomas, a project that promotes gender equality and social inclusion through audiovisual media. She says that during this time, she cannot go out to record her creations. There may be people who think that the quarantine is too harsh or unjust. The same with social distancing. But this is a matter of discipline to protect our health, which is a human right. Education is also a human right, as is life. So they all come together. COVID-19 has forced billions across the world to self-isolate at home. But most people did not have the time to psychologically prepare for this. During this time of isolation in our private homes, inequalities can come about and violence can take place. While at home, duties must be equally distributed. This is time for rest. There needs to be respect for others' privacy, and also it's a time to spend time together. Her home is now the headquarters of Palomas. Her team is here as well. They are all investigating behaviors caused by the pandemic. We live in a patriarchal society where men have often been taught that they need to be the providers, that we must be the economic support of our families. But we need to rethink those roles, especially during this quarantine, so that we can have more fluid roles with our families at home. For Lisa and her team, the responsibility of these days gives meaning to their work, which exists within a political landscape as well. We need to take care of ourselves every day beyond the current social distancing. The future will come and we hope to see people using this time in order to prepare for a better future. Palomas has a new headquarters for the time being. From here, they continue to promote ideas, feelings and emotions for human development. Now to South Africa. Residents of Cape Town's low-income township of Tafelsig blocked roads during a protest demanding state food parcels. Defying quarantine measures, residents burned tires, threw rocks and clashed with police as they called on the government to issue them food parcels. According to a local social organization, residents received a text message allegedly coming from the government that promised them aid, but it has never arrived. 
Local media also reported that several fake messages about food parcels have been circulating and it is unclear if this was one of those messages. And people came out of their homes this morning frustrated, wanting to know what happened, where is our food parcels? Because when we watch the news, we see stuff being distributed in different areas in, in, in our province, but not in Tafel stuff, and the people is angry. This is not animals, this is hungry people. These people are looking just for food. Please, I don't think Ramaphosa is doing something. Why not? Then we can rather die of coronavirus than to, to, than to die in our homes of hunger. And staying in South Africa, a shipment of medical supplies from China has arrived in Johannesburg. Authorities say they received around 10,000 N95 masks, 50,000 disposable surgical masks, 2,000 medical protective gowns, 2,000 medical goggles and 10,000 disposable gloves, among other equipment. Leading epidemiologist Salim Abdul Karim has warned South Africans that if they abandon the lockdown too early, it will, it will undo all the good progress made so far. Our correspondent, Johan Abrahams, is in Cape Town and reports. Professor Karim, the chairperson of the Ministerial Advisory Committee, says South Africa's COVID-19 curve is uniquely different from that of other countries. Graphs show that the daily infections stopped increasing exponentially since the start of the lockdown almost three weeks ago. He says this is not because of lack of testing, because testing increased over the past three weeks. He attributes it to the strict national lockdown regulations. So what we have seen is a slight difference in our curve. And the government interventions have slowed the viral spread. The curve has been impacted and we have now gained time. Karim says the results of new infections in the following week will determine whether a further lockdown is needed. He says if the number of daily cases is 90 or more between now and 16 April, the lockdown needs to be extended beyond the end of April. According to the health ministry, so far 2,272 have tested positive for COVID-19 and 27 have died. Johan Abrams for Telesur in Cape Town, South Africa. Ethiopia and the United Nations have opened a humanitarian transport hub at Addis Ababa Airport to distribute medical supplies and aid workers across the African continent amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The arrangement, which relies on cargo services provided by Ethiopian Airlines, could also help the airlines recover from the losses due to the pandemic. An initial shipment of 3,000 cubic meters of supplies, including mostly personal protective equipment for health workers, will be distributed within the next week. And um, the idea is that commodities, medical supplies, equipment would be sourced in our major hubs in China, in Europe, and, um, and in Dubai, and they would be shipped here for onward distribution around Africa. So this is a really important platform for the response to COVID-19 because what it does is it allows us to move with speed and efficiency to respond to the needs as they are unfolding. We're taking a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back. More news at this hour. France has reported a drop in the number of COVID-19 patients in intensive care for the sixth day in a row. The number of confirmed cases in France now exceeds 100,000, while the death toll is close to 15,800. There are 6,730 patients in intensive care units. One third of these patients are below 60 and 61% are between 60 and 80 years old. 
There are 95 people under 30 in intensive care. In the last 24 hours, 275 new patients have been admitted to intensive care, which is a little more than yesterday. But still, for the sixth consecutive day, we are treating 91 fewer patients. Austria has decided to ease the nationwide lockdown and allow businesses smaller than 400 square meters and public parks to reopen. I have the feeling until the end of the year that we will have to wear a mask. I guess as long as the virus still hangs somewhere in the air before it comes back, it's better to wear a mask longer. And you have a normal life again and can celebrate Easter and Christmas again. I think that is very important for us. Former U.S. President Barack Obama has endorsed Joe Biden's bid for the Democratic presidential nomination. The kind of leadership that's guided by knowledge and experience, honesty and humility, empathy and grace. That kind of leadership doesn't just belong in our state capitals and mayor's offices. It belongs in the White House. And that's why I'm so proud to endorse Joe Biden for president of the United States. Choosing Joe to be my vice president was one of the best decisions I ever made, and he became a close friend. And I believe Joe has all the qualities we need in a president right now. India's nationwide lockdown has been extended until at least May 3rd. The WHO has praised India's decision, but millions of daily wage workers complain about the lack of support from the government. Hundreds of thousands are being forced to travel hundreds of kilometers back to their home villages since they don't have a job anymore. According to official figures, there are over 10,000 COVID-19 cases and 358 deaths in India. Bad experts fear the real numbers are much higher. Those areas which don't let themselves become hot spots and whose chances of turning into a hot spot are also less. There, some important activities can be allowed and the lockdown relaxed from April 20. China has approved another two COVID-19 vaccine candidates for clinical trials. The two vaccines are being developed by laboratories in the city of Wuhan and Beijing. One was developed under the guidance of the Academy of Military Sciences and has already entered the second phase of trials. Now researchers are testing the vaccine on a group of 300 people. According to the Chinese Ministry of Science and Technology, the government is pushing forward research on five kinds of vaccines, but no date has been given on when they'll be available. The two inactivated vaccines that were approved for clinical trials in the past two days are based on conventional techniques. The production of such vaccines is maturing techniques and the standards are more controllable. It also has a wider scope of application and there are internationally conventional standards on safety and effectiveness. The work in this regard will provide more alternatives in vaccines. Leaders of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations held an online summit on Tuesday to address the challenges of the pandemic. The chairman of the bloc, Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc, highlighted that efforts to contain the disease have proven to be successful across the member nations. Cooperation in healthcare, defense, economic affairs and tourism has grown. Assistance in the provision of essential commodities and medical supplies have been given in aid, has been provided to fellow Asian citizens in need. Our efforts to contain the pandemic have produced encouraging results and the pandemic is actually under control. It shows that out of a population of 650 million, there have been just over 15,000 confirmed cases, which is lower than the global average. And we end with breaking news from the U.S. President Donald Trump has decided to halt all funding for the WHO, the World Health Organization, for its handling of the coronavirus. Let's remember that he said it a couple of days ago that he will uh, take away all the funding for the WHO and accused it of being biased towards China, to which the WHO responded to Trump and other world leaders not to make this a political virus. And with that, we end our news brief. But as you know, you can find all of these stories on our website, telesurenglish.net. 
and be sure to also find us on social media. For Tell Us Through English, I'm Carla Gonzalez. Until next time.